Everybody, uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, this is introducing the Drupal API client, and I am Brian Perry, and I'm excited to be back at another Twin Cities Drupal camp. Woo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is me. I'm great at surfing for real. Um, I uh, I come from the Chicago suburbs. I uh, I work for Pantheon. I focus on. Uh, our starter kits for decoupled sites, which is uh, pretty relevant to what we'll be talking about today. I also uh, really love Nintendo-related things. Uh, I'm still playing through Tears of the Kingdom. I think I am 115 hours into it. <laughs> um, I also have been playing uh, this game, The Messenger, which uh, I bounced off of, but I'm finding really fun now, which is like an old... 8-bit, 16-bit, like, Ninja Gaiden-type action game. Just remind me later, I guess, I'll show you. Uh, up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, yeah. So that's me. Um, a little fun side note. Uh, the slides here, um, they're still a little janky. I haven't been able to iron everything out, and that, that's really on me. But um, this slide deck is actually just static HTML pages using the cool new View Transitions API. Um, which has been fun to play with, and I think has some interesting possibilities for Drupal, too. But uh, what we're going to talk about is the Drupal API client project. Uh, just kind of give an overview on what this is, uh, why we're doing it, uh, how we're approaching it, and uh, if you're interested, how you can get involved. But um, So what it is is uh, JavaScript packages to help you source data from common Drupal APIs. That's at the highest level what we're trying to do with this. And the dream is that this could be something that's offered on the, the uh, Drupal namespace on NPM. So under the at Drupal org, there could be an official client uh, for talking to JSON API, for example, which we don't have today. And uh, at uh, DrupalCon Pitch Pittsburgh, there was the Pitchburg competition. Yeah. Uh, which some of you may be familiar with, but uh, Shark Tank style thing where you're able to submit project concepts. Um, and uh, we submitted this project and it got funded for $10,000, which is really exciting. I unfortunately wasn't at uh, DrupalCon Pittsburgh, but I was watching remotely. And uh, they didn't tell the people in advance that were going to be featured <laughs> in uh, the keynote. I had uh, suspicions, but uh, I was really, really sweating it because mine was the last one that <laughs> showed up. But thankfully, uh, people voted on it. It got funded, which is great. Um, which now makes this a $10,000 question. Uh, you know, why does Drupal need this? Um, so I have opinions. Uh, people have uh, other opinions. But one of them is... Uh, just, I think that NPM itself, I'll zoom out a little bit here, um, tells a story. So I think it is not crazy to expect a JavaScript developer who uh, might be working with Drupal for the first time to just dump Drupal in the search box on NPM. And if you do that, uh, this is what you see as of a few days ago. The first result is an implementation of parts of Drupal's user slash access control API. Uh, that was created 10 years ago. JavaScript existed 10 years ago? Um, and then uh, there is uh, Next.js Drupal web form, which is useful but very specific, uh, an image style package. The fourth thing is Drupal SDK, which I, I would understand if someone assumed is Drupal's official SDK. Um, all the way down, the last result is something under the Drupal namespace, but it's kind of a confusing set of results, especially if what you want to do is just start getting stuff out of Drupal. If you know to look under the Drupal organization on NPM, uh, there are four packages. Um, it, uh, as of somewhat recently, uh, it was previously two, uh, now it's four. There are a couple that we published as part of the decoupled menus initiative, but they're all still really specific. There is uh, once, which is a replacement for jQuery once that I believe is used in core, an autocomplete package, a couple things for decoupled menus, but um, not a lot of utilities, and they're all very specific. Um, on the other hand, if you search for our friends uh, in WordPress, um, it makes a lot more sense. 
the first result is a client for working with WordPress. Hey, that's what I'm looking for. Um, there's a Gatsby plugin, which makes sense if you're working with Gatsby. And then there's a lot of stuff under the WordPress org. A lot of that is driven by the Gutenberg editor, um, because that is uh, JavaScript and React. But even some of these packages um, still make sense out of the context of Gutenberg. They're general utilities that you could use if you're working with WordPress and JavaScript. But also, it just kind of communicates like, hey, WordPress is serious about JavaScript. Um, and this is not a fair, completely fair one-to-one -one comparison, but I, I think it's relevant. Um, if you've worked with Contentful, which is a, a headless CMS, um, it also has a little bit of a, a kind of clearer ecosystem, which makes sense because this is really the only way that you can interface with Contentful, but there's a uh, client for Contentful's content delivery API, a number of things under you know, the Contentful namespace. Um, it makes sense how you get started uh, from here. Uh, Drupal does have uh, a number of projects in the ecosystem that aim to do what this project is doing. Um, they're all somewhat similar. They, some of them have similar names. There is the Drupal JS SDK, uh, Drupal State, which is a, a project that I help maintain and, and we use in some projects at Pantheon. There is a Drupal SDK, which is different from the Drupal JS SDK. Uh, Next.js for Drupal has its own client. Um, there's a project that sprung up recently called Drupal Kit uh, that also does some similar things. Um, but again, that in and of itself, I think, is a little bit confusing to somebody who might be new to this space, trying to figure out which of these utilities might work for them. Um, and like I said, they're all pretty similar. So this is uh, just a kind of hello world example uh, using Drupal State. Um, so you import the package. Uh, in this case, you create an instance of uh, the store. And then there are methods you can use to get, in this case, all of the recipes from JSON API or an individual one. Uh, Drupal State does some local caching by default. So the first time it'll hit uh, JSON API, the second time it'll get it from the local store. Uh, this is the uh, next for Drupal client. Um, and, you know, just looking at it at a high level, the, uh, the APIs are, are pretty similar. These are all doing similar things uh, slightly differently. Uh, but you can get your, all of the articles or an individual resource. Um, yeah, similar stuff. Um, but some important differences. Uh, so obviously all of these projects um, serve like slightly different needs, slightly different priorities, have different APIs, um, you know, not exactly the same. Uh, some of them are framework agnostic, some of them are framework specific. Uh, Next for Drupal's client, for example, unsurprisingly, has some things baked in about React and React hooks and what Next.js expects which is great if you're working with Next.js, not necessarily great if you're working with Vue. <laughs> um, and also these projects all have you know, different groups of people behind them who are maintaining them, have varying uh, amounts of uh, time that they can put into the projects, um, and you know, ebb and flow as open source projects can. So I think that um, you know, the fact that people are solving this problem over and over uh, indicates that there is a need for this. Uh, it's possible that we're all wrong. <laughs> uh, but personally, I don't think so. Um, uh, but yeah, people, you know, people just uh, are solving this problem over and over. Or on a lot of decoupled projects are just rolling their own. Um, you got to get data out of Drupal somehow. Uh, so going back to the project and, uh, and Pittsburgh, um, Here's essentially what we're committing to based on that funding. Um, I think it's, it's been very helpful in that trying to define this clearly enough that uh, the Drupal Association is uh, comfortable <laughs> releasing the funds has been helpful for the project and that it, it helps uh, kind of focus us in a little bit. But uh, basically three main things we're trying to do. The first is a, uh, a vertical slice proof of concept. Um, if you're not familiar with the, the term vertical slice, it's used in uh, tech, also common in the video game space. 
it's basically the idea that you create a proof of concept or a demo that uh, is not going to cover everything, but is uh, v very deep in a specific area. It might be like a section of your game if it was a game. Um, so here we're trying to, we'll talk about you know, exactly what we're trying to accomplish with that, but um, something that can kind of show end to end what this client could do, but is obviously not yet the whole thing. And part of the reason for that is you know, to validate what we're doing, but also to make it easier to start having conversations with the community um, and Drupal's <laughs> JavaScript maintainers. Uh, again, with the idea that uh, hopefully this is something that we can build in the community and could be offered under the Drupal namespace on NPM. And then also uh, a, the, the kind of final official release as far as this commitment is a JSON API client, uh, a 1.0 release, uh, hopefully pretty fully featured. And uh, if you're interested in all of the details, as far as like what, how we're describing it, what we're committing to, uh, there's a link to our uh, uh, scope of work. So uh, going into a little bit more detail on uh, like how we're actually going to tackle this, because I think it is um, relevant to uh, you know why this project might be a little bit different and why it might make sense for it to be a, a, a official Drupal thing. Um, but uh, so the basic idea is that there is going to be a, a base class for just API clients in general. So um, we'll look at the details, but the idea there is that it would have all of the things that uh, a variety of different API clients might need, like a way to uh, fetch data from Drupal, authentication utilities, things like that. And then uh, extending that class, uh, there will be specific client implementations. And the first one that you know, we're going to focus on is JSON API. So uh, let's look at, this is a kind of early proof of concept that was put together for the pitch but like exactly what that might look like. So, uh, all right, get this back here. A little bit of extra room. Um, so, uh, this is the API client class. Uh, again, this is a uh, extremely small and focused proof of concept, but um, the API client class here has some properties of the base URL of your uh, Drupal API, and then um, defines uh, a few other things like a uh, few optional options, um, like an API prefix, and then also a uh, custom fetch function. So uh, the only other thing that's defined in this base class, in this example, is uh, that fetch function. And all that does is if you don't pass in a custom fetch, fetch function. It just uses traditional uh, JavaScript fetch API. Uh, if you do provide a compatible fetch API, it uses that instead. Um, so that's an example of something that would just be part of this API client base class. Anything that extends it gets fetch and a way to override fetch if they want to. So then looking at uh, this JSON API client class that extends it. Um, so the things that are different about this is uh, the API prefix. Uh, a default that makes sense for JSON API is JSON API. So if you don't provide an API prefix, it just uses JSON API as default, uh, but you could change that. And then uh, there is one method here, the get collection method in this case, um, and you provide a uh, resource uh, type here. Um, so it might be you know, node article, for example, node dash dash article. And it just takes that and uh, figures out which endpoint to fetch from. Uh, splits that up, uh, gets that from JSON API, and then gets the response back and returns the result. Uh, so you know, pretty straightforward, but it's using uh, either the default fetch or whatever fetch you provide uh, from that base class. And then uh, this is just an example of what a, a different client uh, might need to do here. So in this case, this is an example of what a GraphQL client could look like that's still built on that same base class. So the things that are different here, uh, the API prefix uh, is different for GraphQL uh, with uh, Drupal. It's GraphQL, <laughs> unsurprisingly. 
And then there is a query method. And uh, for GraphQL, it uh, often uses post by default, the post method, and then there is a, uh, a query that you provide in the body. So uh, the query method just takes uh, that string and then makes the request to Drupal's endpoint. So the, you know, the idea here is that all you'll need to define for a client like this is the things that are different, um, the things that you don't want beyond the API client defaults. And then uh, you, know, you can see the results on the right-hand side. So uh, there's GraphQL first, uh, and we're querying for just the title of all of the recipe nodes. So we just see a response that has all the titles. And then uh, the JSON, JSON API client, on the other hand, um, right now in this example, is just getting all of the results back uh, that we get for all recipes. So all the fields, all of the data that you may or may not need. And then, uh, yeah, there's really not too much to talk about in the index file here. Um, on the side here, you know, we already have examples of, of how we call that. So different methods that we're using, different things that we are uh, passing in to the function. Um, but again, hopefully a lot of the uh, base is covered in that, that base class. All right. Yeah, so uh, again, kind of the idea here and, and why I think this is potentially a little bit different from uh, some of the past uh, approaches here is that we're really trying to focus on uh, an extendable base, which opens up the possibility to do things like create other clients. Uh, it would be hopefully pretty easy to create a REST client for Drupal Core's REST module if you wanted to do that today in 2023. Um, or if you, uh, you know, the idea is that we're going to ship a uh, hopefully useful out of the box JSON API client. But if you or your project had uh, really specific opinions about maybe a state management solution or something, um, you should be able to easily extend the JSON API client. You could even uh, actually publish that with your particular opinionated flavor of what a Drupal JSON API client would be. Or alternatively, uh, if you just wanted to use individual utilities from this package, uh, you certainly could do that. Like, for example, uh, things to make authentication easier. Maybe you don't want a full client, uh, but you just want a way to uh, solve the problem of authenticating with Drupal. Or you could use these things in a framework-specific starter of some kind. So, uh, moving on. Uh, Let's look a, a little bit more at kind of what we're planning on doing for that uh, initial vertical slice POC. Uh, checking in, how's everybody doing? All right, excellent. Um, okay, so yeah, so for the, the vertical slice POC, uh, again, the idea is that we're hopefully getting a kind of deep section of, of what this client can do. Uh, so it is uh, just getting resources of a specific type, not unlike the example that, that we, we looked at. So, you know, get all of your uh, basic pages, things like that. Um, but what we're going to exercise is all of the different options uh, that we want to expose for the client. Um, and we'll look at exactly what those are. Um, but the idea here is that hopefully that is going to make uh, building out the rest of this uh, client easier in that all of the different options, we've explored them and uh, set them up and you know, saw what works, what, what didn't. Um, and then also that this will just make conversation with the community and Drupal's JavaScript maintainers easier in that we can say, uh, you know, you can actually try this thing. Here's how we approached it. This is kind of where we're going. Um, and hopefully that will make the conversation easier. Uh, there is a, uh, a meta issue for this POC. Um, and a bunch of uh, child issues for the different options and a few other things. But um, so yeah, here's here's what uh, we're thinking as far as what the options for a client like this would be. Uh, in most cases, the idea is that we're going to have some kind of default, um, but make it possible to override it in a variety of different ways. So uh, authentication—that's something that has come up uh, quite a bit already. Um, so we want to support just common uh, Drupal authentication approaches in that uh, kind of base class. So um, 
for the POC, we're just going to, to start with basic authentication. You know, we're going to have to do the things that Core supports. Um, longer term, uh, simple OAuth seems to be a, uh, a very common option uh, in the community to authenticate when using JSON API. So that's another thing that I think we'll have uh, utilities for. Um, and it's another thing that, you know, hopefully we can get feedback from the community and figure out what of the other options are important. But uh, again, so those are, are things that the kind of base client should be able to do out of the box. So hopefully you don't have to, uh, you know, reinvent the wheel in figuring out how to authenticate with Drupal and can instead just start getting data from it. Um, and also, the, as will be the case with a lot of these options, um, there'll be certain methods for Drupal that we support, but also kind of a, a general uh, interface into providing custom authentication in general. So if you had some other fancy way that you uh, authenticate and talk to Drupal, it should be possible to provide that as well. Uh, fetch, uh, which obviously we saw some examples of that as well. Um, there are many reasons, be it personal preference or otherwise, that somebody might want to provide their own method to actually fetch uh, data in JavaScript. Um, so uh, we're going to start with things that are fetch compatible. And we already have, uh, we essentially basically have already implemented this. But um, so but out of the box, we just use default uh, JavaScript fetch API. Um, but as long as it's compatible with uh, the interface of fetch, you can provide your own. Um, and like I said, sometimes that might be personal opinion. Hey, why can't I use this? Um, but there are some other situations where you know, that's, that's really relevant. Um, setting headers, for example, for requests. Um, in some of the projects at, at Pantheon, we do things to be able to get... Um, cache tags from responses, so we can attach that to uh, responses on the front end uh, for cache purging and things like that, and that's a lot easier if you can actually just override that globally when you fetch data. Uh, then there is the topic of caching. So um, you can definitely make things a lot more efficient if uh, you don't have to talk to Drupal every time you need a particular resource from JSON API. Um, so we want to support caching in general. Um, so again, people have a lot of opinions about things like state management. So this is, again, kind of providing an API to that. Uh, by default, it looks like we are going to uh, have an example that uses local storage, so just JavaScript local storage in general. Uh, but the idea is that you could use other state management libraries as well. And also, um, uh, I think at this point, at least for the POC, uh, the perspective is that we're not going to cache by default, um, but make it really easy to set up a, a local cache if you needed to. Uh, then logging. Everybody, everybody loves logging. Um, so uh, again, you know, kind of similar idea here in that uh, it should be able to provide a, a custom logger. Um, for this example, we're just going to use uh, console log equivalents, uh, you know, a log method where you can pass in the log level and it will just log to the console. Um, but uh, you may have a specific logging package that you use. You may need to send uh, data when debugging to some particular third party service or something. Um, and this hopefully will make all that possible. Then there is uh, deserialization. Um, so we'll look at some examples to make this a little bit more concrete. Um, but this is the concept of converting the response that you get from you know, JSON API in this case to a more simplified uh, JavaScript object. Um, so let's, let's look at what, exactly what that would mean here. Uh, who is uh, uh, familiar, who, who has used JSON API with Drupal in general? Great, okay. So uh, some of this you will know if you have uh, experienced this before. But um, So this is just an example that gets, uh, in this case, I believe, uh, recipes data from the Umami uh, demo data um, with some included uh, referenced entities from the recipes. So uh, that actually is you know, pretty easy to make a request that does that. 
But the response that you get if you're not familiar with uh, JSON API, the spec, or Drupal's implementation of it, um, finding that data, it might not be you know, exactly where you expect. So if we look at the response here, some things are at the root of uh, data, some things are under attributes, but then for uh, relationships and reference entities, it gets a little bit more complicated in that there is this relationships object, and then you have to go all the way down to uh, the includes and look things up by, by type or ID to be able to eventually get all the way down to the name of the uh, tag here of main courses. So that data is there. Uh, and it's, you know, not the end of the world to be able to find it, but, um, you know, it takes a little bit of work uh, to figure out where it is. So deserializing it, um, you know, the, the common approach we see from a lot of these libraries is to just provide a flatter object. So, uh, you know, in this case, most things are just kind of at the top level here, all of the different fields, and if we scroll down, uh, there is a top level field recipe category, and then a name, so you can just be... Uh, field recipe category dot name, easier to get to. Um, so uh, again, for this initial proof of concept, I don't think we'll uh, we'll just have the uh, default response um, out of the box, but it should be easy to be able to create this kind of simplified um, representation of the data, or you know people can provide their own methods that manipulate it uh, when they get their response back. Uh, localization um, is, you know, something that uh, Drupal does well, and there's been a lot of investment in. Um, so that is something that we want to be able to support, and has been a pain point, uh, you know, speaking for the Drupal State project, um, something that really wasn't accounted for upfront. Um, but we want to make it uh, easy to be able to get, for example, the Spanish version of a page, or the English version of a page. Um, and the way that we had to work around that in uh, that library is essentially to create like multiple instances of the store per language. Um, so just having, you know, accounting for that and having some actual API to, you know, be able to get different localized versions of content is important. Um, one thing that has come up in, uh, in the issue queue and early discussions uh, from even some of the JSON API maintainers, there are some kind of limitations for localization with JSON API in general. Um, so we'll need to make sure that we're careful kind of where we invest there, but I do think that at like the base level, people would expect to be able to get, again, like the Spanish version of a node. So we wanna make sure we can do that. Uh, and then JSON API, if you have used it before, you're probably <laughs> familiar with this, but there are a number of different parameters that you can pass in to adjust your query. You can sort your data, you can filter it, you can include uh, reference entities like we saw before. There's just a set of parameters for the spec. Uh, Drupal all handles that really nicely and we want to make sure that it's really easy to add those. So for example, you can uh, you know, get a sparse response that just has the fields that you need because having a smaller payload can make a big difference. Um, uh, Working along with uh, the project so far, oh, so there is a, a package called uh, JSON API params on NPM that people may have used, which is a really nice interface into uh, these different JSON API parameters. Um, the maintainer of that is working with us, so definitely hoping that he will uh, give us some strong guidance here. I don't think we know exactly how we're gonna solve this yet, but you know, it's something that uh, even as part of this POC, we wanna make sure is really easy. Um, so, uh, you know, mentioning uh, some kind of early conversations and community discussions, um, something that's came up, and also maybe you're wondering here, is, uh, you know, why are we building this from scratch um, and not, you know, using some sort of off-the-shelf solution? Isn't this a, just a solved problem? Um, and sure, it is. <laughs> um, so. You know, part of the reason that we're trying to approach this with the proof of concept is to step back after we've made some progress and, and actually evaluate, like, would we, does it make sense that we're building this from scratch or would we be better off learning, uh, leaning on existing solutions? Um, a few that have come up uh, in the, the issue queue, uh, Brad Jones, I believe Jones is his last name, but uh, one of the 
uh, JSON API uh, ecosystem maintainers um, has advocated pretty strongly for like let's just use an existing package that can talk to JSON API and just get this done, which is not not a crazy thing to suggest. Um, so one of those packages is uh, Orbit uh, JS, which is really great at dealing with a predefined schema. So if you know your your schema, which is definitely something that uh, I think will be a, a future step of this project. Um, but for a starting point, I think we just need to be able to uh, reach out to Drupal and get all the stuff, even if we don't know what that schema actually is. Um, but Orbit's really good at that. Uh, yes? Is it Orbit or Rebit? Oh, it's probably a typo. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, it is, I believe, Orbit. Um, but... Uh, yeah, good with dealing with a schema and can handle a lot of things like caching and parameters and, and all of that stuff, uh, but also has like a really specific opinionated API. Uh, Kitsu, I, I think that's how you pronounce that, and, and that I believe that is actually typed correctly, is a little bit more of a, uh, a more basic uh, JSON API uh, package, but you know can talk to JSON API, handles all CRUD operations, parameters, things like that. Um, so, uh, but, you know, based on what we talked about before, hopefully this is somewhat obvious, but um, part of the reason why I think it does make sense for us to build some of these things from scratch is that, one, we're really trying to create a base that we can build on top of, even beyond just JSON API. I think that will have value for the Drupal community. A and also, it allows us to you know, be a little bit more Drupal specific, Drupal friendly, bake in some of the things that make sense for Drupal that some of these packages might not take care of. Um, but again, you know, the fact that we are doing this proof of concept gives us the opportunity to, to step back and be like, you know, are we, uh, are we in for a world of pain here? Um, you know, is it working out building it ourselves? Is this providing value? Does the community agree with that? Um, you know, and we can change course if we need to. Um, so yeah, we have uh, definitely uh, started work on this project and have uh, developer tooling set up, um, have had some uh, great <laughs> discussions about like what makes sense for this particular project. Um, uh, here are some of the fancy fun things that we use. Uh, we're writing uh, the, in TypeScript. Um, we're using uh, TypeDoc and uh, TSDoc to uh, uh, provide uh, documentation for our, our code that can spit out a, an API uh, documentation site. We're using uh, PNPM as a package manager and standardizing on that. Um, the reason that we're using that instead of uh, just regular NPM or Yarn is uh, because, well, one of the reasons anyway, is because it's really great with uh, mono repos and workspaces. Um, so, you know, even just in the work that we're doing so far, we have the base client package, the JSON API client package, we have uh, a set of examples that is an, another separate thing, um, and being able to have workspaces for those with PNPM is really easy, it's very fast in the way that it uh, deals with uh, all of your node dependencies, and looking to the future, it, it, there's a lot of uh, easier ways to kind of publish those individual packages out of a single, single repository. We're using vtest for uh, a, t a test framework, ESLint and Prettier for formatting and linting. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things, uh, especially if you are interested in like finding a place to start uh, poking around with TypeScript, for example. Um, this might be a fun place to, to get in and start working with it. Um, so uh, looking beyond the proof of concept for you know, what we're trying to do for 1.0, um, you know, nothing really shocking or groundbreaking here, hopefully, but um, so we want to be able to get an individual resource. We want to support all of the different uh, CRUD operations that JSON API supports, so it should be possible to create a article using this API, for example. Um, there's more things that we want to support regarding authentication, uh, simple OAuth is definitely a big one. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to solve all of the world's authentication problems in the 1.0 release, but hopefully get uh, some important ones. 
and also you know create a base if there are other things that that uh, people in the community feel strongly about and want to advocate or uh, contribute back great um, documentation and examples and we'll talk about this uh, a, a little bit more in a bit but there's definitely a lot that we can do here to document uh, you know this client uh, and what it can do um, we will not be able to you know document and solve all of the problems but it's important that we at least have like common things like here's a server side rendered example of using this client here's a client side example etc um, and again the the dream here you know there's definitely uh, discussions that need to happen, convincing most likely, uh, but the dream is that this 1.0 release will be published under the Drupal namespace. Uh, going back to uh, the funding, um, you uh, might be remembering that uh, $10,000 question and wondering, you know, hey, what, what's going to happen with that money? Um, in, in some ways, this having funding is actually kind of the hardest part of this project. Um, you know, Participating in that uh, competition was really great for visibility and exposure. Um, my hope is that having funding will allow people who may not have been able to spend time on this project to do that. Um, but in general, uh, at like the highest level, what we're planning on doing is uh, establishing an open collective uh, so that we can make uh, managing this money and distributing it just open so that people can see it. Um, and how I'm thinking that we'll split up the funds is uh, essentially a third for proactive sponsorship. You know, a, a few people that we can find that can dedicate time with this funding to moving the project forward, proactively do that. Um, there will definitely be people that kind of drop in, make small contributions, um, but don't have a large set of time. We've definitely already had um, a nice set of people contributing. I want to be able to kind of uh, reactively compensate people for that work with these funds. And uh, also want to set aside a, a chunk of this just for maintenance. So, you know, we, we're going to have to keep the lights on if this is successful, updates, you know, deal with issues in the issue queue. So having some funds focused on that, I think, can be useful. And uh, if we split it up into thirds, we still have 1% left, which is going to be just used on a completely irresponsible wild party. <laughs> Not really. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there, I was told there would be no math. But. Um, and then uh, the future. So, um, you know, even just trying to clearly define the scope of this thing, um, there are so many things that a project like this could do in supporting decoupled Drupal, so many different opinions <laughs> out there. So... There's a, you know, a lot that we could do beyond just this uh, JSON API client. The biggest thing is that there are so many things that could be documented um, around using this uh, client in you know, specific use cases with specific frameworks or you know, different approaches to a uh, couple Drupal. We had a big conversation yesterday about WebSockets. You know? There are just so many things that we could document, provide, uh, showcase examples for, uh, but we also can't just, you know, do that forever up front in, in 1.0. Um, and then also, there is uh, a real lack of documentation on Drupal.org around decoupled Drupal. We have a nice space carved out in the developer docs and some things around the decoupled menus initiative, but there is so much that could be documented there. Um, and it's been hard to get uh, momentum around that. And my hope is that if we had, you know, essentially a Drupal package for talking to JSON API, that could kind of be a starting point to funnel some of this documentation through. So, you know, how do you use this utility uh, to solve common use cases? And then, you know, it can grow from there. What are alternatives? And, you know, but it, right now the documentation is in a very sad state. <laughs> um, and also, if this is successful and, you know, we establish an uh, open collective around this, maybe there's an opportunity for this collective, uh, you know, this group of contributors to continue on to other Drupal-relevant JavaScript projects. So, uh, if you're interested in getting involved, there's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, I'll be around during the uh, unconference contribution block. Um, 
But we have a, uh, a project on Drupal.org where we have a bunch of issues and where we manage our code, obviously. There's an API client channel on Drupal Slack. Right now we're having async Slack meetings uh, every other Thursday, uh, except for the Thursdays we forget, <coughs> like yesterday. <laughs> um, and we also have an initial guide to contributing. So like, how can you set up the code base? What's different about PNPM? Things like that. Um, so uh, by all means, uh, we'd love to have uh, contributors getting, getting in, getting involved. Um, and even beyond contributing code, like I mentioned, there's a lot uh, of possibilities around documentation. But even just hearing from people in the community about like what would be useful for a project like this, or even just confirming that this actually would be useful, is super valuable too. So any of that information is uh, an important contribution. And uh, yeah, we have uh, a few extra minutes if there's any Q&A, but thank you. Yes? I just want to say thanks for doing this because the past four years have been SaaS, Drupal, API-driven things. And VC money has been thrown at GraphQL. There's Apollo, right? Like, yeah. yeah. But JSON API is like, oh, there's the devourer client. There's Orbit.js is very particular. And let's face it, somebody's going to Drupal and they're like, you have a Drupal site connect headless, they're gonna find a Drupal client. Or say, how do I take Axios with its middlewares and talk to Drupal? They're not gonna, because they, they don't know the JSON API spec, that's not yep. a VC backed tag. Yeah. So just thanks for this and making it a lot easier to sell Drupal as a product. So I appreciate it. Awesome. <laughs> uh, for the recording, uh, Matt said thanks, and I said, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chris. Uh, so the the main way that like a user would engage with the API client would be to download it, get it into a code editor, and start hacking through some code. Um, is there any plans on like providing a, a, an entry path for folks that are, aren't going to immediately dive into to code? Yeah, so make, just making it easy easy to experiment with it. Yeah, uh, like a like a component that that implements the client. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so there are, are the question was is there uh, you know plans for a component that implements the client or a way for people to kind of more easily get started? There are not concrete plans for that right now. Um, really trying to focus on you know all the stuff that we outlined for 1.0. Yeah. I think that is also another awesome thing that becomes possible if this package exists. Um, there are so many things like that. Yeah, a lot of people look at GraphQL these days, and they have that nice little component that is able you're able to just type your query and see the result of that. Yep. Thinking of something on that scale. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there are already some JSON API uh, solutions for like, you're, you're talking about like graphical for GraphQL, where you have like the query explorer, like that sort of thing. Yeah. Query describer. Yes. Yep. So there are JSON API solutions for that uh, today. So some of it might be like setting up things like that and making it easy for people to be able to use that. But yeah, also creating our own, you know, Drupal flavored version of that uh, becomes possible if this exists. Any other questions? A anyone other than Matt want to thank me? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Cool.